Welcome to the Tune Under podcast, your the Southern Hemisphere's greatest and best Newcastle United podcast. Uh, my name is Bobby, and today I'm hosting this very special podcast. Um, we've got something good for you fans out there today. So, I've got former coach of new Newcastle United signing, the Aussie Wonder Kid, Graham Cole. Welcome to the Tune Under podcast, Craig Carley. Thanks for having me, mate. No, really excited. Really excited for Garang too. Yeah, it's been uh, well, a breath of fresh air for us here in Australia to get this much coverage in the, you know, of a young local kid that's uh, making some strides, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is, mate. He's he's an absolute superstar, and you know, I, I think everyone's just got to fall in love with him once they wait, they actually get to know him and, and know his personality. He's just a, a beautiful, beautiful kid. Yeah, oh, fantastic. That's great to hear. So we're obviously here to talk about Garang, but first we'll delve in a little bit about you, mate. Um, tell us a little bit about your history, where you started, your playing and coaching and how you ended up in Australia. Yeah, look, um, you know, I, I was just playing non-league football before I come over here, um, you know, playing for teams, AFC Wimbledon, Met Police, Dartford, um, you know, knocking around a little bit of disillusion with the football over in the UK and um, when I played in South Africa for a bit in there, in their top tier and an opportunity came to, to come over to Australia and um, initially it was going to be a six month contract um, and then I was going to head back to the UK but just fell in love with the country and I think it's been 12, 13 years now and and here I am, um, you know, knocked around the MPL system in Victoria for a bit, played at top tier clubs, um, Hume City and Avondale um, but spent the majority of my career, you know, playing and scoring a heap of goals at GV Suns and then an opportunity came to be the player coach at the GV Suns as well. So, you know, took that and, um, you know, I've been quite successful for for four years or so. Um, halfway through last season, um, parted ties with the club for various reasons. Um, but yeah, you know, still still heavily involved and went back to having a kick with a local side, Shepherd and South, um, just to keep the body ticking over and get that feeling of scoring a couple of goals against. So it's been, yeah, it's been a bit of a, you know, a whirlwind ride, but um, just feel one of the luckiest people in the world to be in this beautiful country. So very privileged. Oh, fantastic. No, it's great to hear. And how did you find the difference between, you know, obviously Hume and Avondale are Melbourne-based clubs, and then going to to GV Suns in Shepparton? What, what, what was the change like? Because I know I've done it from Melbourne to Ballarat and it's a bit of a more community feel. Is that what you found? Oh, certainly. You know, um, I think my experiences were probably a little bit different because I was still living in Shepparton um, and commuting down, you know, three, four, sometimes five times a week um, wow. to go and train at those clubs. And, you know, when you're doing that and you mix that into a full time job as well, you know, you're, you're spending um, plenty of hours on the road and um, it was hard. You start getting niggles on the body and, you know, right. it's it's just not sustainable. So, you know, for the opportunity to come back, um, you know, and, and coach the club in the area um, was brilliant. And yeah, as you said before, you know, that having that community feel from a regional area, um, it's very, very different to these other semi-professional clubs. You know, you get to know the families very intimately. Um, you know, I, I try to build a culture where the senior players know all the juniors. You know, if you run into them in the street or if they're a training, you know, it's it's all one. You know, you all incorporate with each other. So um, that, that was a heavy focus. Um, of when I took the role at GV Suns and you know it certainly showed in some of the successes I guess that we've we've had more recently with with younger players going on into more professional environments so you know it's something that I'm, I'm quite proud of um, during my time as the senior coach there but um, yeah as I said you know these these are the sorts of stories that we we love to see you know kids yeah. going on and bettering themselves and you know life-changing experiences basically. Yeah, absolutely. To produce, you know, the, the talent. I know um, we'll talk about the family and it's quite a talented family because he's got a brother that's playing overseas. So um, from Shepparton, it's just, it's a great story and great to see. And, um, you know, it, it shows like the coaching that you've done as well. You've got a good name around the, the traps in the MPL, mate. So well done on that. Thank you. Appreciate it. So now I'm Garang. So I want to delve into his 
you know, outside of football life a little bit. I think we're all talking about on field and, you know, his rapid rise and everything like that. But what was he like as a kid, you know, growing up in Shepherd and his family? Can you tell us a little bit of background on that? Yeah, you know, so the Quolls, um, I was involved from the very, very start with the Quolls. And I actually, um, when the GV Suns got their license, I was still playing back then, but said that I would coach one of the junior sides. So I was coaching the under 14s at that time. Um, and had his older brother, Alo, who's at Stuttgart at the moment. Um, and, you know, Alo was just this, you know, just bag of energy, this character. Um, you know, his, his on-field performances were ridiculous in terms of if I needed someone to score a goal, I'd be like, Alo, right, you're going up top now. And then if we yeah. needed to to steady the ship and and keep a clean sheet, right, Alo, you sit back in, in defence. I think he played in every position for the club. Um, but he was just a real personality. And then... There's a brother in between Tang that's at Central Coast um, who's a little bit more reserved. And then there was Garang who was even more reserved um, at the time, you know, and, and they would play pretty much in the same age groups. You know, these kids would play sometimes three games, three games a day. They're playing under 14s, under 15s, and then under 16s, sometimes under 18s. Like it was just ridiculous. Um, and one of the reasons because of that is we, one, we didn't have the numbers all the time to fill all the squads. Um, but two, it was because they were that good as well and they actually could play yeah. those levels. Um, and Garang, he he was a lot more quieter, um, but his football IQ was just phenomenal, even at a young age. You know, he just, the way he would take information on boards, um, you know, the way he would execute some of the things that, that was asked of him, you know, it's just frightening. He's just got that X factor. Um, and you could see his brain just ticking over every time you're talking to him whilst he was quiet and reserved. And as I said, you know, Alo was the other the other end of that spectrum. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful kid. And yeah, we just, you know, just take information in like a sponge. And, you know, it's just a privilege to see where he's going now. And again, you know, I, I don't think this is the heights of where he'll go. I think he'll he'll become an even more of a star, to be honest. Oh, that's good to hear, yeah, I think. And in the community of Shepherd and they're, they're well known. I think that they do a lot for the community itself, the family. Yeah, they do. They're, they're very heavily involved um, in Africa House, which is, you know, a local church group um, where a lot of our African, you know, refugees go. Um, and I know Mum Antoinette is very, very heavily involved in that or was previously before they've, they've just moved up to the Central Coast. Um, yeah. But, you know, Marwin, Mum and Dad were there heavily every single game watching the kids play training um they was always there for a conversation a chat always a massive smile on their faces just a real beautiful family um i think mum's got seven kids now and they've just had a baby girl recently oh, wow. but you know all all the boys are just stars absolute stars uh, constantly see them you know kicking a ball around whether that's at training um out in the street you know it's just phenomenal phenomenal to see and you don't really see it as much these days with kids they're more on the playstations um and the ipads and, and, and all that sort of thing yeah that's right and, and that's why these kids are are so good because they're just constantly playing um we put on a couple of clinics at the church group in previous times and and again you know they were just all there involved even even the younger kids and um there's so much raw talent in in the regional areas um yeah you know, we've been quite lucky, not just the Quals, but we've had um, the Neuenhausens, you know, Gianluca Renucci's from this area as well. These are all kids that are making a name for themselves now at, at international level. And, you know, again, it's it's just, it's it's beautiful to see, um, you know, that, that they're going on and taking these opportunities that are presenting themselves. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And tell us about the history with um, Central Coast Mariners, because obviously Alou got there first, I imagine. Um it's a bit of a mishap for the Victorian clubs in in Melbourne City, Melbourne Victory, and oh, Western United probably weren't around at that stage. But how did that come about, and what was the dealings like to get a Lou? And did they know about the the brothers as well? Yeah, look at the time they didn't know about the brothers, so it was just a low. Um, and I was trying to push everywhere to get into a more professional environment. You know, this kid was so raw. Um, I've I haven't seen another kid with finishing ability like him. Um, and just trying to get him to a club. There was one MPL game we played against Melbourne City and he was playing against um, an international centre-back at the time. And I think he scored four goals in that game. And I'm like, yeah. surely, surely they're going to pick him up after this performance. Um, but no, everyone passed on him. Everyone passed on him. And um, it was a it was a contact 
um, agent at the time um, that was wanted to look after a low um, that I was quite close with. He's he's got links with um, a lot of MPL clubs as well, so Blurtan and and he sort of said, you know, look, I I can get him a trial at, at Central Coast, and I said, mate, if you can do it, you know, go for it, honestly. Um, and from there, the relationship with Nick Montgomery developed a little bit, and I've had a couple of conversations with him after that. Um, I've been quite vocal in in my opinion of the Qual kids um, over the years and how good they they really are. Um, and in previous interviews, you know, I've said that I, I believe Garang is better than better than a lot of them um, in terms of Alo and where he's at. Um, and even Tang Tang's a phenomenal player that's at Central Coast in there. Hopefully, he can break into their A League team this year. But you know, Garang was just different. He's just special. Um, yeah. And again, that's not taking anything away from any of the other brothers because they're all phenomenal and they're all going to be um, top, top players in their own right as well. Does Garang and Alou share similarities at all or are they totally different players? Um, look, I think there's there's plenty of similarities in terms of direct and pace and um, driving into the box. Alou's more of a, a striker and an out-and-out out number nine, um, whereas Garang's a bit more of a playmaker. You know, he's got better feet, in my opinion, and than what Alo has. Alo's just power, pace, direct, can finish. Um, Garang's creative, um, great with a ball at his feet, great in 1v1 situations, loves to drive at players, drive into the box, um, you know, and he's he's going to be exciting in the Premier League. I, I don't know if he'll break in for the first year or even maybe two, but when he does have that breakthrough, um, you know, he's, he's going to be electric to the Premier League, and I, I truly believe that. No, that's fantastic to hear. So tell us a bit about some stories of Greg in the NPL. Um, anything that caught your eye or any stories where, you know, he gave someone a run around or when you first noticed, he noticed his actual, you know, oh, this kid, he's got it. He's going to make it. Yeah. Oh, look, for me, it was, we brought him into the senior environment to train. There was probably three or four younger players that we would always sort of accelerate just so that they were getting, um, building into that culture again at the football club and accelerating into the senior team. Um, and getting them ready at a young age. And there was a pre-season game. It was 2021. Um, it was probably his last game for the club. I think the week after he ended up going up to Central Coast anyway. Um, and we had a pre-season game against Dandy City and Sasha Ogonofsky, um, who's an Australian legend here. Um, he was coaching coaching the side. And I'm, I'm good mates with Semi Simic as well, who was his assistant. Yep. Um, and... You know, we was we was having a decent game that day anyway against a, a decent MPL side. They had just signed a couple of um, A League players, and one happened to be Adrian Layer, who was the oh, Melbourne yeah. Victory captain and um, former Socceroo, You know, quality career in his own right. Um, and we brought Garang on for the last could have been 15, 20 minutes maybe in this game, and he just tore Adrian Layer, you know, apart in that short time. And this kid was just running right, you know, just create three or four chances and and it was that moment where i knew he's ready he would have played a lot of um mpl football for us this year if he would have stuck around um yeah but you know again he's he's gone on to a more professional environment and that's what we strive for with our youngsters you know to get him into those better environments and he was just phenomenal that day he would just honestly he he almost scored um Another story, we've we've got this All-Stars game, which we we have. So the GV Suns play against um, a representative squad from all of the local clubs, all the best players there. And and he's hit this scissor kick in the first five minutes, which is just rattled the crossbar. Um, and I've, I've got the footage of it somewhere. I'll, I'll have to share it and post it somewhere. But he's just like, he just puts hairs on your arms when you watch him play. Um, yeah. He's one of those exciting players that doesn't seem to lose the ball. Um and just plays with such a smile on his face. Um, and again, you know, I've been I've been quite vocal in the past about fees for MPL and and what that costs families and the whole setup here in Australia. And it's it's just ridiculous. You know, we could have lost this family. Um, they do come from a refugee background. Um, parents are very very hard working. They were both working at the lo at the local um, Googe de Laundry service. Um, but you know, they they wouldn't be able to afford MPL fees for for free of their kids you know it's just ridiculous and part of that culture here um of what we had up in Shepparton is you know if if your kid's good enough he'll play and you know we've had people that have subsidized the fees and as part of the return for that you know the, the parents would wash the kids as well um yeah it's their way of incorporate into the football family and 
you know, as I said, you'd, they would always turn up with nice smelling kits, the whole team. And that was one thing that I always remember standing out and speaking to Antoinette and her mum always about, you know, the, the kits are always, our kits are always smelling perfect. So um, <laughs> they took great pride in that. Um, and again, you know, I, I don't think they they ever missed a game. You know, Marwin, who's who's a giant of a man, their father, um, he would stand at six foot six, probably taller. Um yeah, just just phenomenal, phenomenal people. Um, I don't think he comes from a soccer background. I think he played hockey. Um, you know, one other thing to note, I guess, with with all the boys, you know, one minute they're they're four foot tall, and then you turn around a week later, and they're they're all six foot, six foot two, and it's just <laughs> the way they just develop and grow. Um, yeah, they they just done so well for themselves. Um, just beautiful people, beautiful family, and. Um, as I said, I just can't be more prouder of, of where they're going. And, you know, it's it's not just me. It's it's the coaches at the club. Billy Marshall, who's the technical director and, and one of my very, very good friends. Um, he's coached Garang in the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, he's he's got he's got a history of um, being involved in setups. I think he was at West Ham as a coach as well. And, you know, we we have conversations about all the best talented kids or all, every kid really within our system yeah. because it's, it's, it's not only about developing good footballers it's about developing good good people first and foremost um but you know we we want players to improve no matter if they go on to play um international level or you know or if they go and play locally as long as they're developing and becoming better people and you know the, the quals have, have been a fine example of that and um again I, I don't think garang will be the last one that becomes a professional footballer i think um diddy who's who's even younger than him he's he's just moved to central coast um I went and watched his last game three, four weeks ago before the family relocated. Um, and again, you know, he's he's 10 and he's playing two or three years above his, his age and, you know, just Quite tearing incredible. these kids apart. Like, you know, he's, he's dribbling skills and he's touching tight areas. Um, it's just phenomenal. Um, and it's it's a credit to the family because they are so close um, and the African community in Shepparton and they're just constantly with a ball at their feet. You know, it's just... Yeah. It's just a difference. I think it's a real credit to you and the GV Suns community um, because you, you're right. I think football in Australia, for those overseas, it's very much a sport for the haves and not not for the have-nots. And it's an unfortunate byproduct of what's going on at the moment. We're seeing it as well in, in Ballarat where you've got to pay thousands of dollars just to get your kid to play in a, in a competition, uh, the National Premier League. So, um, yeah, it is a shame, but it's great to see that you guys, you know, did those initiatives to, you know, wash the kits and subsidise the payments to get this family through and what a family it is and the production line seems to be keep going and it's benefiting Central Coast at the moment, isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly is. And, you know, um, that's where we want the kids to be. Um, you know, make no mistake, we don't want them to stay in a semi-professional GV Suns environment. I'd love to have them a bit longer when I was senior coach, um, but... You know they're going on to professional teams and you would never ever stand in anyone's way for further development and it's it's what it's all about you know them them going up there and as i said you know garang was lost his last training session was in january in 2021 he was still signed up for us so his rise within you know a season during that even the mm -hmm. end of covid pandemic has just been phenomenal i think he's only played eight games hasn't even started a game and you know he's his stats in that time for Central Coast to just it's through phenomenal. the roof. Yeah. I think um, I was going to talk to you about that. He's It's a rapid rise, isn't it? Less than, you know, a little bit more than 12 months ago, he's playing MPL in regional Victoria. And now he's, you know, playing in the A-League, scoring goals for fun, playing against Barcelona in an exhibition game and absolutely giving them a run around, turning their heads, attention, signing a contract with Newcastle United in the Premier League. And he should be on that plane to the World Cup. I mean... It's a phenomenal story. You, you wouldn't be surprised with that rapid rise, would you? And and do you think he can handle it? Personally, I'm not surprised at a rapid rise because I, I know what the kid's capable of. Um, and, you know, he constantly adapts to the environment that he's in. You know, it, it took him a week or two to adapt to the, the pace of men's football, senior football. Um, but once he did, like, some of the things he, he would do you know, in, in training against senior pros or, or ex-pros um, at the club that we've had, you know, it's just, as I said, it's it's a joy to watch. You know, he's, he's got that X factor. And again, you know, um, 
I've made it quite clear that, that I think he can he has the potential to be one of the best players in the world. And you know, I truly believe that because he's just so adaptable to every single environment. You know, what a lot of people don't realise is he he hasn't come from a, a Premier League Academy um where he's been there since 12, 13, even younger. Um it's very, very different over here in Australia. Um, you know, it's it's a small regional area um where he's come from. And again, you know, he's He's gone from here, set it on fire here. He's gone to Central Coast, um, tore up the the youth league for a couple of months, gone into the A-League environment. He's done that straight away. Um, and I have no doubt that, to give him a bit of time because it's it's a different level and intensity over in the UK. But once he he finds his feet, um, you know, I, I just think he'll, he will be one of the best players in the world. And, and I, hopefully we get to see that at the World Cup this year. Yeah, it's a big comment. I, I was going to talk to you about that comment about being one of the best players in the world because I think I read it of an article here in Australia and almost spat out my coffee because just the, the buzz with him. But I've seen a lot of highlights and especially that game against Barcelona where these guys are no mugs. They're, they're the top class players and he was absolutely running rings around, around the world, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Look, and he, he's done that wherever he's gone. You know, he's gone to represent Victoria um, in the NTC program. Again, he's, he's always been the best player there. Um, and he, he just adapts to any environment. Um, and that's the thing about him. You know, you, you think you raise the bar and you challenge him more. Um, and he just excels at that too. Um, and it, it's just a credit to him that that he does love the game so much. And he, he does want to con- constantly learn. Um, again, you know, I think he's going to be under a great man- manager in Eddie Howe. I'm, I'm not yeah. too happy with the result on the weekend, to be honest, because I'm a Fulham fan myself. <laughs> um, but you know, again, to see a low, uh, to see sorry, Garang in the crowd with the fans in the Absolutely, away end, yeah. that's that's him, and he's just such a down to earth kid. Um, you know, he would he would give anyone a time of day that, that wants to have a conversation. You know, he, he comes across as as quiet and reserved, but he's just so electric on the pitch. His his attributes are just going to suit the Premier League down to the ground. Oh, fantastic to hear. And lastly. If you had to compare him to a player, a professional player, in terms of style, do you have one in mind or is he just a bit more unique? Uh, look, I, I think, you know, he's, he'll have a good role model in St. Maximum at, at Newcastle, if I'm honest. Um, very, very similar in, in terms of pace, direct, loves to beat a man, drive into the box, um, got that X factor. Um, I think very similar to him. Um, you know, someone like Mbappe, it's, it's a big call, but... You know, that's that's how highly I, I believe he can go. I, I truly believe he can be one of the best players in the world. Just He's just so direct and just loves to beat a man, um, you know, and, and drive into that box and score goals and create goals. You know, I, I could I could do my own highlights reel of, of what, what he's produced over the last two or three, or three, four, five years at our club, you know, from goals he's scored. And, and it's just... It's scintillating to see. Like he, he's just going to be a star. Um, I really do believe that he will go on to be one of the best players in the world. Fantastic. Well, on that note, we might leave it there. I know you're a very busy man and currently at work, so thank you for giving us your time. Um, you should take a lot of credit, Craig. I think um, I know the work you've done in that community and um, that cool family is definitely uh, something that we should cherish here in Australia. So thank you for your time, um, and we look forward to hopefully catching up with you again soon. Thank you. Li- Thank you. No, they were good. They were all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, for all our listeners, if you haven't subscribed yet, we've hit our thousand um, subscribers. So that's a big for us. So um, hit the subscribe button and we'll be with you with a preview of the next game and uh, everything from there. So thank you very much. Yeah.